this one. So, on number 12, um, it says a pizza shop makes $1.50 on a small pizza and $2.50 on a large pizza. On a typical Friday, it sells between 70 and 90 small pizzas and between 100 and 140 large pizzas. The shop can make no more than 210 pizzas in a day. How many size pizzas uh, must be sold in order to maximize profit? So, I'm reading through this and I came up with a couple things. At one point, they're talking about making money. And at the other thing, they're talking about what types of, how many pizzas they can make. Those are two different types of things, right? Um, so now they're only asking is how much, they're asking us what is the profit. They're not asking how many pizzas did they sell, right? You guys agree with me? So when, they're, when we're solving this, it's, um, they're asking for the profit, but we don't know how many pizzas, how many small pizzas, or how many large pizzas they sold. But we do have, a, we do have an equation for the profit. So I'm going to say P. So I'll say P equals profit. So we do have three kind of variables in this case. But for P, luckily, we already have something. This, we already have an equation we can solve for it, which is called our um, objective function. So I'll say X equals numbers of small pizzas and not sold. And Y equals the number of large pizzas. And you could have done it a different way. That's, that's fine. So. They say, for every time they sell a small piece of pizza, though, they make $1.50, right? Now, do you add the number of small pieces, or do you multiply how many they sold? Multiply. Think about this way. If you sold one pizza, how much money do you make? 150. If you sell two, how much money do you make? Three. You just keep on adding them, right? But what I'm trying to get to is you think of adding. You're adding the pizzas, right? So my question might have been a little bit confusing. Don't think you're wrong. You're fine. You're adding them. You're adding them, right? But what I'm saying is, if I sold eight pieces of pizza, are you going to add eight to that, or are you going to multiply it? That's what I was trying to get to there. So you're going. You're just representing adding. You're representing it as multiplication. And then for the small, it's going to be 215 times the how many you sell, right? Which would be, or how many you sell for the large, which is y. Does that make sense? It makes sense. Okay. That represents profit, though. Now, the problem is we need to figure out x and y. Well, we don't know x and y. The only thing we do know is that they cannot make more than, what, 215? 210. We know that the total number of pizzas that they're going to make has to be less than 210. We also know that um, between 90 and, what, se oh, I'm sorry, 70 and 90, we know that x has to be between 70 and 90, and y has to be between 100 and 140. Yes? Well, they are probably in. They are probably asking you to assume that we're talking about a typical Friday. How much are you going to have to maximize profit? Because otherwise, if we didn't have these constraints, then, then if it wasn't a typical Friday, then you could make more than 210 pizzas, right? Yeah. Well, so it'd be unlimited. Exactly. So I thought I thought it was going to be like a miracle, miracle Monday. So. Well, exactly, and you could have a miracle Monday. You could say, hey, we'll make 2,000 pizzas, and then that kind of blokes it off as like there is no maxim, right? It's infinite. So you have to fall within those constraints. And that's what they, they did with that. Um, now, basically, to go ahead and graph this, let's go by um, 20s, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, um, 180, 200, 210, and, oh, jeez, 10, 20, or 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 
20, 40, 60, 80, 100. OK, so we have 100 and 200, right? Now, I'm just going to try to estimate this best I can. We know that x has to be greater than or equal to 70. x has to be greater than or equal to 70. Do you guys agree with that? So then I go to 70. So this would be 80. This would be 60. So 70 is right here. And I draw a straight line. And all values to the right of that are going to be greater than that. Then we also know x has to be less than 90. So I'd go to 90, and I'd draw another straight line. And x is less than 90 is going to be all points to the left. Then I have y has to be greater than 100. So now I'll go over here and draw a nice horizontal line at 100. And that is greater than, so that's going to be all values up. And then y has to be less than 140, which is a horizontal line right there. And that's all the values that are below. And then the last one is um, x plus y has to be less than or equal to 210. Well, if you solve for x here, or solve for y, I'm sorry, that's going to be down 1 over 1. If you keep on going down 1 over 1 starting at 210, Let's just say that's my values there. So therefore, you have these points are going to fill in your feasible region. Then you determine what all these vertices are. That's going to maximize your profit. So this vertice is 70, 100. This one is 70, 140. This one is 90, 100. And then these two, since I'm not using graph paper, I'm just going to kind of estimate. I'll say this one's at 135. Oh, I'm sorry, no. I'll say this is at 90, 135. And this one, I'll say, is at 95, 140. Then these are all your x and y coordinates. You plug those in for x and y here and determine which one gives you the maximum profit. Does that make sense? No? Where did I lose you? Do you understand how I graph these vertical lines? Do you understand how I graph the vertical lines? Um, yeah. Do you, you can say no. I'll re-explain it. Do you understand how I graph the horizontal lines? Um, you can say no. It's no, OK. OK. So you have 70 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 90. That's the same thing as saying x has to be greater than or equal to 70, and x has to be less than or equal to 90. Do you remember how to graph the line? Like, if I said graph x equals 5, if you were to go order 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you'd make a dot here. Well, x equals 5 is always, x always equals 5. So it's a vertical line. So these are vertical lines. But it's vertical at 70, and it's vertical at 90. And then since it's greater than, it's shading to the right. Since this one's less than, you're shading to the left. The y one is the same thing, but now you're dealing with horizontal lines. y equals 100. But it's greater than, so it has to go up. Y is less than 140, horizontal line has to shade down below. Make a little bit of sense? Then this one, I put this in slope intercept form. I went, that's the y intercept, so I went up. And then what I figured out was if I'm going down one over one, every time I go down, I go to the right one. So I knew that it was going to cross at 210 down here. Because you're going down, as far as you go, once you go down to 209, you're going to go over 1. And that's going to keep on following that pattern over here. Either way, when I graphed it, I just sketched, and these were my two areas. But this is going to be the region, and it was less than 2. So the region where all of my inequalities was true was this little box. And then the points where the box intersect are what we call our vertices. And then when you plug in your vertices, you'll get the maximum p, which I'm not going to go over because I know we're already running out of time in class. But that's basically the process of that. Yes? 